Mm. Namaste. Hello, friends. <laughs> Thanks for joining another evening of Yang Tian. So, in our present, in our present time, there's a bit of stuff going on in the world. And um, there's a lot of strong emotion. There's some really heavy stuff going on in the States around um, the injustices um, towards different people. And while it elicits a lot of feeling, sometimes on top of all of the stuff that's happening with COVID and um, people's own lives that have been deeply affected, businesses lost, family members ill, all kinds of things. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of physical manifestation of these things because how can it not, how can it not affect us in some physical way as well? So tonight, I'd like to introduce this idea. It's a Sanskrit term. The word is neti neti. And it's basically, I'll just read this beautiful um, definition of neti neti. It literally means not this, not that. So as all these things come at us, as all these emotions well up within us, it is important to acknowledge what we are not. Yeah, we can feel these things. We can think these things. But if we're able to think something, then we are not that thought. <laughs> if we feel something, we are not that feeling. And just coming back to that sense of, well, who is doing the thinking? What is feeling? So neti neti is a form of analytical meditation that helps the individual to understand, helps us to understand the nature of Brahman, the nature of ultimate absolute reality by first understanding what is not Brahman, what is not reality. Hmm? So it helps us to understand the nature of absolute reality by first understanding what is not absolute reality. So it's not that we can't think or feel or engage. This is life. This is a real human being vessel that we exist in and we live in. But can we bring ourselves back, back, back to the witness mind and see what is happening rather than identify with the strength and the strong emotions and be carried away on these waves? I think I mentioned in class the other day the Yoga Sutra, Yoga Chittavritti Narodaha. So, yoga is a cessation of the, the waves of the mind. The cessation of the waves of the mind. This is the piece, this is the focus of yoga. So we can use neti neti, not this, not that, to explore our way into that space. And that is yoga. Let's bow to that. Come onto the mat in child's pose. Take the knees wide, take your toes together and just soften the body down between the thighs, heart towards the floor, forehead resting down. And we'll take our three cleansing breaths in this position. Deep full inhale through your nose. Long sigh out through the mouth. Really engage lower belly, press out the air. Inhale again, your timing, filling the lungs, filling the sides of the lungs and all the lobes all the way up under the armpits, shoulders. And side out, let the body soften down towards the earth. Just give yourself over now. Inhale again, in. 
And full long exhale. Ah, just let it go. Yeah. Just let the breath flow naturally as you stretch it out. Get a little bit engaged, pressing the palms into the floor. One at a time, feeling the side body stretch out. Shoulders start to engage. And then walk your hands over to your right. Ground down through the left sit bone towards the left heel. And press with the left palm down and away into the floor, engaging the entire left side body, starting to stretch it out. Keep breathing. Walk hands back through center, out to your left. Bow it down, stretch it out. Feel the forehead rest down to the earth if it reaches. Right hand presses down and away, right hip. Connecting back to right heel, right side body, elongated, rib cage spreading wide into costal, stretching out here. We're starting to move some of that gunk from the deep spaces within. And then slowly come back to center. Press the palms into the floor and then tent the fingertips, lift the heart, look towards the fingertips. And exhale down. Two more like that. Just opening the heart space. We'll be working with this space a little bit today. Inhale. And exhale. There's never a time when working with the heart is a bad idea. <laughs> Inhale. Open. The state of the world requires so much heart and kindness right now. Hey. And then gently rise all the way up to all fours, starting to come into cat cow. So take a moment to stack your shoulders over your wrists, hips over the knee. Release the tops of the feet into the floor as you inhale, soften the belly, open the heart, lift the gaze. As you exhale, let's tuck toes. We'll work through the toes a bit today as well. Tuck tail, round the back, gaze to your navel. Two more times, inhale, release the feet, open the heart. Shoulders slide down the back. Exhale, tuck toes round the back. Press away with the hands. Take the gaze to the navel, entire spine incorporated. Inhale, one more time. Open the heart, cow pose. Exhale, lots of space. Round it out. Press it away. Gaze to the navel. Come back through center. And take a look over your right shoulder towards the right hip, contracting the right shoulder towards the right hip. Come back to center. So you're just taking the spine in a nice curve, side to side, left shoulder to left hip. And back two more times. Right shoulder to right hip, contracting the right side body, stretching out the left. And then contract the left. So you're getting this really nice massage through your midsection as you contract, right side, inhale, center, final time, contract, left side body, and then let it free up, come back to all fours, we start to engage lower belly, draw belly button to spine, shoulder blades slide down the back and extend, right arm, left leg, exhale, Elbow to knee, gaze to the knee. Inhale, right arm, left leg, extend again. Exhale it in. You can close the eyes if you can keep your balance here and just feel from the inside. Inhale. And exhale, curl it in. And then release the hand and knee to the floor. Swap sides. Left arm, right leg, extend long. And exhale. Inhale, reach. Exhale, curl. Inhale, reach. Exhale, curl it in. And come back to all fours. 
tuck the toes. And once again, we're going to work with these fire toes, sitting back on the heels. And I'm just going to turn to face you, make a little lotus flower with your hands at your heart center. So the pinky side of the hands touch and then the thumbs touch. And there's a lovely bud here in the middle. So if it's comfortable staying on your lotus toe, I mean your fire toes, if not, you can release tops of the feet down, but just try. We're gonna take our lotus blossom here and just work with the cyclic nature of the lotus. So take the fingertips all to touch, making a little bud, and then turn the backs of the fingers together and allow the hands to come down towards the earth, making the roots of the lotus flower. As you inhale, lift them back up, making the bud, and then blossoming the bud. And close your eyes. We'll do that two more times. Fingertips touch, making the bud. Turn the backs of the fingers and palms together and come down to the roots. Just acknowledging that from the roots grow the bud and then blossoms the flower. And the flower eventually composts back down into the earth. And this is the cyclic nature of things. We are not just the flower, nor the bud, nor the roots. Neti, neti. One more time, allow the hands to blossom out into your beautiful lotus in full bloom. Take the hands back into prayer and we move into three rounds of moon salute, starting to warm up the body of you. Just acknowledging this balance of left and right side body between the palms. And then inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands come down through midline, reach forward to child's pose. Inhale, ripple forward into your easy plank. And today, we're going to turn the fingertips in towards each other so we get a really open front body. Inhale. And as you exhale, bend the elbows wide and lower down to the floor. Keep the fingertips pointing towards each other as you lift the heart into a cobra. Exhale, release it down. Fingertips turn forward again. Press back into child's pose. Exhale. Inhale, engage the belly. Lift the hips up, down the facing dog. Pedal it out. Find stillness, deep breath in. Exhale, knees to the floor. Turn the fingertips to face each other again. Inhale. Exhale. Lower elbows wide. Keep the fingertips facing each other. Inhale. Bhujangasana, little baby cobra. Heart super open. Exhale. Lower. Fingertips turn forward. Press into the hands. Engage triceps. Hips to heels. Child's pose. Inhale, sit back on your fire toes, circle sweep your arms up to the sky. And exhale, the hands back down to heart center. Inhale them straight back up. Exhale, reach forward, child's pose. Just flowing with the breath, let the breath guide the movement. Easy plank, shoulders over wrists, turn the fingertips to Face each other. Inhale again. Exhale, elbows wide as you lower down. Release the tops of the feet. Inhale, wide heart, Bhujangasana. Exhale, lower. Fingertips point forward. Tuck the toes, hips to heels. And then inhale up to your downward dog. Nice and smooth. Pedaling out the heels again, taking a little bit of a sway. Inhale, nice and long exhale, easy plank. Turn the fingers inward, exhale down. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, lower. Fingers point forward, press back into your child's pose. 
starting to feel the arms working. Inhale, sit back on the heels, fire toes, reach the arms up to the sky. Exhale that home to the heart and keep moving. Inhale to sweep the arms back up. Exhale to find your child. Inhale to your easy plank, turning the fingertips in. Exhale, elbows wide, lower down. Release the tops of the feet, open the heart, shoulders away from the ears. And release. Turn the fingers forward, press into the triceps. As you lift back through child's exhale. Inhale, lifts you to downward facing dog. See if you can find a nice long down dog here. Grounding down through thumb, forefinger knuckle. Lifting the tailbone, grounding the heels towards the floor. Inhale. Exhale, knees come down. Easy plank, last time. Coming back, turning fingertips towards each other and exhale, lower. Inhale. Heart opens. Exhale, release. Turn the fingertips forward. Tuck the toes, hips to heels. Take a child's pose. And then inhale, sit back on the fire toes. Circle sweep, arms wide. Gaze up. And exhale, hands. Two heart centre, pausing here. Getting a little bit warmer. Let's walk the hands forward and come up into a downward facing dog. Take the feet a little bit wider than hip distance, so almost towards the edges of the mat. We're gonna take a down dog twist. So get very even through both hands into the mat. And then as you lift and hover the left hand, nothing else changes in the shape of the body. And then you can twist from the torso, reaching through for the outside of the left, uh, sorry, right calf, ankle or thigh, as you continue to press very strongly away with the right hand so that the hips stay square and you find yourself gazing under that right armpit. And then gently release. Square it off. And prepare, hover the right hand. Everything else stays put. And then sweep it through, taking a nice deep twist through under the left armpit, using the hand on the leg for traction. Squaring the hips, lifting that left hip back in line with the right, nice and square. Beautiful twist. And then come back, downward facing dog. Hmm. And then walk the, hand, the feet back to midline and then heel toe the feet to the top of the mat. Take a nice halfway lift and lengthen. And then soften your knees as you allow the torso to drape over the thighs. Two more, inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. And exhale, fold, knees soft. One more time, inhale. And exhale. This time, slowly stack the spine as you uncurl all the way up to Tadasana, top of the mat. Sun C, let's just keep moving, noticing what you feel and observing as you inhale the arms up overhead that you are not your arms. Exhale, forward fold. You are not even your breath. Inhale, half lift. So who is breathing? Who is moving? Exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands and step the right foot all the way back. Let the right knee come down to the floor. As you inhale, arms up. And we're going to take a nice twist here. So exhale, open towards the left, reaching the left arm back. Sweep the right left arm down through six o'clock and back up to 12 o'clock. 
Two more times. Exhale, arms wide. Inhale them back up to center. One more nice big twist. So really getting into that midsection, opening it out. And then exhale, both hands to the floor. Heel to the left foot, nice and wide. So the hands come onto the inside of the left foot. Turn the left toes out 45 degrees. Open onto the knife edge of that left foot for lizard pose. It's Uttan Pristasana. Staying here or coming down onto the forearms is an option. And tucking the right toes and lifting the right knee off the mat is also an option. If you've come on down to your forearms and up onto your right toes, can you slide the shoulders down the back and keep the torso nice and even parallel to the mat so that you're not forcing yourself into some place that you don't even need to go yet. And if you feel that there's a part of you telling you you should go there, just listen and have a look at the reasoning behind that and decide whether you need to listen to that voice or not because you are not that thought. <laughs> Stay with the breath. And then rise back up onto the hands if you're on the forearms and lower the back knee if you're off the floor. Heel toe the left foot back to midline and take the hips over the right knee Straighten the left leg and draw the left toes back towards you. Half Hanumanasana. Inhale as you lengthen. Exhale as you fold. Two more times. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the heart. Exhale. Inhale, get long through that. Left leg, heel extending away. Femur, thigh bone extending back into the hip socket as you fold and maybe stay here. If you feel to keep moving, you can keep moving. Otherwise, two more breaths. Just letting the leg grow long. Sensation is here. Neti, neti, are you the sensation? And if so, then who is feeling that sensation? It's a very interesting way to shift perspective. Hmm. And if it's all a bit much for your brain, just don't worry about it. <laughs> ah, last breath in through the nose. Let's let it go side out the mouth. Ah. And then come back onto the left foot, rise up into warrior two. So ground that right heel, parallel the arms with the mat. Steady deep through that left knee. And then you're gonna inhale, rotate the arms and the heart up to the sky. Exhale as you turn the palms all the way down and around. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, round. One more time, inhale, open it up. Exhale, round. Come back to warrior two. Interlace the hands behind the back. Turn to the top of the mat, inhale, open the heart. Keep the nice deep bend in that front knee as you exhale, humble warrior. Fold on the inside of that left knee, ground that right heel down. Draw the left hip back. And just let it soften in. A little micro bend in the elbows, see if you can draw the palms closer together. Inhale, release the hands to the lower back. And rise back up into a high lunge. So we're going to keep working quite strongly with a bit of balance here. So you're going to take a big step forward and hug that right knee into your chest. Good. So two options here. You can keep holding the knee and just take the knee forward like this. 
If you like, you can take Hasta Paranga Stasana. So you're taking the peace fingers and thumb around the right big toe, extending any amount out in front of you with that leg. Another option if you have a strap is to wrap a strap just beneath the ball of the right foot. The idea is that you don't want to be hunched forward over that leg. So if you need to, then you bend the knee a little bit, but bring your torso back to upright. So really plug that thigh bone back into the hip socket, engage your belly and core, and see if you can keep the leg there as you reach the arms up overhead. Maybe the arms stay on the hips. Slide the shoulders down the back. And then bend that leg in, taking a tree pose. So just staying with the focus and the balance here. I'll just turn to face you so you can see. I'm not mirroring you. Hands to heart center. Inhale, reach the arms up. Find a nice steady Vrikshasana tree pose. Left standing leg super strong. It will be burning. There will be sensation. So work with that. One more nice breath in. As you exhale, if you can still keep the balance, you're going to take that right leg out behind you. So I've turned back this way so you can see to a nice quad stretch. So you're holding on to the right foot, drawing the right heel to the buttock, and then lengthen the tailbone down to the floor so you get a nice deep quadriceps stretch in the front of the right thigh. And if you want a little extra, Natarajasana is here for you. So just shifting the grip to the inside edge of the right foot, kicking right foot back into the hand. Ah, lots of sensation in the left standing leg. It's been working some time now. And then see if you can step it back into your high lunge. Ooh, how'd you go? <laughs> and then bring hands down to the floor. Step it back into plank pose. And you have an option to lower the knees as you did before or lower one long line down to the floor. Inhale, Bhujangasana Cobra. Exhale, release. Tuck the toes, press back up, downward facing dog. Ooh, stretching out those left Achilles and calf muscles. Right leg inhales up to the sky. Curl the right foot, step it between the hands and let the left knee come down on the floor. And we take a nice stretch out here. If you release the top of the left foot into the floor, it'll help to stretch out the calf. I mean, the shin, the front of that left foot, which is also possibly feeling some sensation from supporting those standing balances such a long time. Exhale, hands down, frame front foot. And step left foot to join the right. Halfway lift. And fold. Hmm. Inhale, rise up. Sweep the arms wide. Lift the heart. And exhale. Hands back to heart center. Good. Composure. Focus. So it is difficult to suddenly clear all the ripples in the mind at once, but what can help? It's actually not possible, <laughs> but what can help and what is meant a lot of the time in the interpretations of the sutras is that we put our mind into one point, single pointed mind focus. So, what is that tonight? Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. 
and the hands, left foot steps all the way back, left knee comes down. Inhale, arms to the sky, Anjaneyasana. Taking the side sweep, exhale, twist to the right. Right hand continues to sweep. Inhale, exhale wide. Inhale up. Third time, exhale, twist it out. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands to the inside of the right foot. Heel toe the right foot wide, 45 degrees. Roll onto the knife edge of that right foot. Option, stay here, breathe it out. Come down onto the forearms if you wish. Maybe you get there, you think, no, I'm coming back up. That's fine, that's how we find out. Tuck the right left toes, press into the left heel, lift that left knee. Check that one out. Hmm. So just tuning into the difference between stretch and strain between effort and pain. Do you notice yourself identifying with anything? And then no need to judge if you are, just see, just see where you're at. And then rising back up onto the hands. Soften the left knee down to the floor, heel toe, right foot back towards the center. And we shift the hips over the back knee. Flex right toes back towards you. Even as you lengthen that heel away from the body, feel the right hip plug, uh, thigh plug into the hip. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, soften. Two more. Lift and lengthen. Fold and release. Lift, lengthen, soften down and stay. This ujjayi breath. Feel that breath travel up and down the back of that right leg. It's bringing ease and length. Mm, juice and love, all the good things. Last breath in. Stay, exhale, sigh out, out. And then gently come back onto the right foot. Tuck the left toes, rise up into your warrior two. Right knee stacked over the right heel. Hands, arms even. Inhale, open the palms, open the heart. Exhale, turn the palms down and away, round the upper back. Inhale, open, legs stay super strong. Exhale, round. Last time, inhale. Oh, enjoy that movement of the shoulder in a socket, round it out. So much joy to be had. <laughs> Inhale, regular warrior two. And then turn to the top of the mat, interlace the fingers behind the back. Open the heart. And exhale, humble warrior inside of that right knee. If you find that the feet are a bit too close together, you can always heel toe that right foot out to the edge of the mat a little bit. Draw the right hip towards the back of the mat. Remembering a little micro bend in the elbows can be helpful. Drawing the palms together. What's happening in the neck, shoulders? Staying with the breath. Last inhale through the nose. Side out, bring the hands back to the lower back. Rise back up into a high lunge. And then we take left knee all the way forward. So this is the start of our standing balance sequence. So you can keep hugging that left knee in, or you can take 
Hasta Parangustasana. Knee bent or straight. And just as in the half Hanuman, the thigh plugs back into the hip. Helps to have a steady, gentle gaze point. So we stay here. Engage the core, engage the belly. Maybe keep the leg and release the arms up. And then come into a tree pose, elegantly placing left foot on inner right thigh. I hope you can see what's going on from the side here. Bringing hands to prayer at heart center. If you still have your balance, maybe lift the arms up overhead. At any point, you can take a modification, letting that left foot come to the inner left uh, right calf or onto the floor. Just building steadiness, building our stability, our ability to weather the storms, the winds of emotion, strong feelings. Hands come back by your side. We take the quad stretch. Right leg is firing up, building strength and resilience. Drawing heel to buttock. Lengthen tailbone down to the floor, deepen that quad stretch front of the left thigh. If you like, coming into Natarajasana, changing the grip so that the left hand comes to the inside of the left foot, so the thumb will be up towards the sky. Leaning forward, kicking the foot back into the hand to engage. Nataraj is the dancing incarnation of Shiva. There is a statue of Nataraj here in the studio. And Nataraj dances on a demon. And that demon is ignorance. <laughs> Step back, high lunge. Woo. Hands down to the floor. You can take a rest, you can take a down dog, or you can take a vinyasa, high plank. Your variation, you can come all the way onto the floor, you can lower the knees first, or you can do as I'm doing, chaturanga, up dog. And we'll all meet in downward facing dog. I'm just feeling the backs of the legs stretch out here. Feeling the spine grow long. And then you can slowly step or jump back up to the top of the mat. Halfway lift, lengthen. And exhale, forward fold. And then inhale, rise up, arms up. And exhale, hands back to the heart. Close your eyes. Release your hands by your side. And just feel. Where are you? Hmm? Are there thoughts? And just observe them. And then focus your awareness on the feet on the floor. The heart beating inside your chest. The air flowing in and out of your lungs. And then come back down into your child's pose. Take the knees as wide as is comfortable. Allow the heart to soften down to the floor between the knees. And we are coming into the 
yin and restful part of the practice. So if at this point you're starting to cool down again, you want to put on a jumper or make sure that you have a blanket close by, please do that now. So you might like to take the hands forward. Or you might even like to experiment with taking the knees closer together, relaxing the hands either side of the shins. Or if your shoulders feel like they need even more relaxing down towards the earth, you can allow the hands to cross on the lower back and just let the shoulder heads really roll down towards the mat. Just taking a couple of breaths here. And then gently bring the hands back beneath the shoulders, slowly curl up to sit. Please keep your chin on your chest till the end. And then come to sitting in Janusha Sasana. So I will mirror you. Or take your left foot to your inner right thigh. And again, you might like to have a strap. So there are three parts to going into our Janu. So the first one is to just bring the hands behind the lower back to lengthen and sit up nice and tall. So if you find that your back is rounding here, it's hard to sit up straight, then please get a blanket and prop yourself up. I don't know if you can see, like if my hips were propped up on a, something higher, it would enable my back to feel nice and straight. So you want to find a nice long back and spine. And then we want to turn the belly button to look towards those right toes that are saying hello to the sky. So they're not falling in to the center and they're not falling out. And then we inhale one more time here. And then we slowly allow ourselves to fold over that extended leg any amount. This is where strap comes in handy. Strapping it just below the ball of the foot. And using that to feel the body lengthen out of the hips. And over the leg. So the chin wants to come in the direction of the shin. Janusha Sasana literally means head to knee pose, but really it's more helpful to think of chin to shin, yeah? Just a couple more breaths here. Just relaxing into the posture, letting the back stretch out. And then at some point you can even relax the head down and let the upper body start to round. If it's pulling and the leg, hamstring are quite tight, you put a little bit of a bend into that left knee. Sorry, the right knee, you've got your right leg extended. Just letting your awareness turn inwards as your physical gaze looks back on yourself. And even here, if you can see it, is that really you? Who is seeing? And what is being seen? Mm. 
And inhale. Slowly, slowly, slowly rising back up. Chin stays on the chest. Take a little twist to the left. Placing that right hand to the outside of the left knee. And then keep that sense of space and that right hand on the outside of the left knee and then sweep the left hand overhead towards the right toes. Paprita Janusha Sasana. Just one more breath in. And out. Inhale, left arm all the way behind you and rise up into a star, stretching out the entire right side body as you rise up on the left knee. And then come back down. Switch sides. Left leg extends, right foot comes to inner thigh. So get yourself sorted so that you can feel the spine is long and comfortable. We want that central channel, Shushumna, to be free, to allow the energy to flow. So it's not about looking like a ruler. It's about allowing the energetic movement through your body. Turn belly button to point towards the left toes. Lengthen, inhale. Exhale, allow yourself to come down. Slowly, slowly, taking a few minutes here. And again, you can use a strap. And even if you know you can come down quite fast, sometimes it's nice to use a strap just to find a slightly different shape and length in the body. Maybe not coming down as far, but exploring, plugging thigh into the hip, lengthening through the heel. So there's the same situation as when we were doing the half Hanumanasana. If this was a longer class, it was actually a second sequence I wanted to do with you that explored all those avenues a little further, a little deeper. I'll have to come to class when we reopen. <laughs> Coming back to the breath. Perhaps letting the upper body relax and range now. Deep inhale. Stay for the exhale. Slowly find your way back up to sleep. Take a twist to the right. Left hand to the outside of the right knee. Pressing back into the knee. And keep the hand there, stretch right arm overhead towards the left toes. So if you rotate the chest open to the sky, it's creating space even as you twist, even as you fold. One more in. Enjoy the breath out. And the right hand comes down to the floor behind you. Left arm sweeps up and open into a big star, stretching out that entire left side body. 
Hmm. Brings a smile to the lips, this one. And then come back. And let's bring soles of the feet together. Baddha Konasana. Let's give the knees a little bit of butterfly release. And then we come all the way down into Supta Baddha Konasana. So we keep the feet pressed together, knees wide, and just come to lying, resting on your back. If you need support under the knees and you have blocks of cushions, you can use them. Allow the hands to come to heart and belly, grounding you back into the space within. We'll take two to three minutes here. Close down your eyes. Just lengthen the back of your neck a little bit. Soften your jaw. The temples. Let the nostrils be soft as the air flows gently in and out. Letting go of any particular control of the breath. So letting go of your ujjayi. If you have a long-term steady practice, sometimes that ujjayi breath just kicks in whenever you're moving. So you have to actually consciously Release it to come back to just normal abdominal breath. Mm. Let the hips soften, belly soften. Feel the support ground. Allowing your body to rest. Allowing the mind to go quiet. A few more moments. Just notice if there is still some point for you, feel some tension or tightness, and see if you can release it yourself using your own body's intelligence, using your own breath to work with these spots, these places. And then bring the hands either side of the knees and gently bring them back together. So the next couple of poses, if you have a block, you can do them in a slightly supported back bend variation. If you don't have one, then you're going to do the same things with the hips down on the floor. So I'll show you what it'll look like on the floor. You'll just extend the legs. And then one at a time, you're going to hug first the right knee in. So we work with the right side body first, compressing the ascending colon and then the descending with the left side second. And you just hug that right knee in, let the left leg Lie long, stretching out hip flexors, so as one of the left hip. If you have a block, 
stay the same, but you have a little bit of height. So block goes under the sacrum, either lowest or middle height. And we take that right knee. In. So it's just a little bit more dynamic. And even if you have a block, you may choose not to use it. And we stay here. Mm. And you're releasing the hips. Just letting gravity do its thing. If you have a block, then you're also in a little bit of a back bend. So there are different things going on in the body with this asana, with this posture. So what is it giving to you? What are you receiving from this? And then you release the leg and hug the left knee in. Lengthen right leg long on the floor, whether the hips are on or off the block. Oh, you really feel that really nice deep release in there. Oh my goodness, that right hip flexor can get tight sometimes. I think driving is quite a culprit. It'd be interesting as people start to commute more again in the world, back in their cars, will we allow those tightnesses to come back or will we notice the difference and take time? to work on loosening them out or doing the practice that we know helps to balance out that life. A mm, couple more moments here. Time's really flown tonight. Take that left foot back down to the floor if you're on the block. Press into the feet evenly to lift the hips off the mat block and slide it out. And then curl the spine down to the floor. If you're already on the floor, then you're on the floor. Tug both knees into the chest gently. A little bit of a rock side to side. And we'll take a happy baby. Holding the outer edges of the feet, drawing the thighs down either side of the torso. Ah, massaging out the back, the spine. Bring the soles of the feet together, holding onto the feet and or ankles here and rocking side to side, massaging the lower back. Mm -hmm. Are there any last movements that you wish to make? You can go ahead. Maybe some sacrum spirals. Perhaps something with the arms, through a little bit of a twist. And then find your way into final resting pose, Shavasana. Just lift, lifting the head a little, feeling nice and long through the back of the neck. Flattening shoulder blades into the floor, turning palms upwards. Lengthen tailbone. Wiggle the hips side to side, release the pelvis. 
thighs, knees, ankles, toes. Soften the face, little smile, smile through your whole body. And soften your eyes. Smooth the skin on your face, your skin. Let it go, let it go. Please feel free to stay as long as you need. The good shavasana can be here. a quarter of the length of your class, so you could take another 15 minutes. And then only when you're ready, you can start to deepen your breath. Wiggle your fingers, toes. Stretch out overhead. Give yourself a hug. And slowly roll out to one side. And make your way back. Mm. Left palm meets right. Your heart centre. Hmm. May you find peace in this practice. Please raise your hands to your third eye. Raise your hands above you. And touch the fingertips to the earth, bow down. And then rise back up. Often I ask you to just think of something you're grateful for, but tonight I just ask, Maybe you can send the energy of your practice to someone who you are grateful for or someone you feel might need a little bit of grace. So this is Metta, sending loving kindness out into the world. Namaste.